Horace Mann, born to Thomas and Rebecca Mann on May 4, 1796 in the small town of Franklin, Massachusetts. He was born into a poor family, but this would not stop him from becoming one of the biggest influences on American history. Despite his lack of formal education, he had less than six weeks of formal schooling from the ages of 10 to 20. He would make use of the Franklin Public Library, the first public library in the country. Mann would attend Brown University and graduated as a valedictorian in three years in 1819. After this, Mann was elected to the Massachusetts State Legislature, but his passion laid in education. Mann was appointed to the Secretary of Massachusetts Board of Education in 1837. Due to his lack of formal education and his background as someone who received very little formal schooling, Mann wanted to make schooling available and required for all. After taking a trip to Prussia, Mann returned to the U.S. with a fresh mind and much more knowledge on how to make his dream work. In Prussia, Mann found that the teaching force was mostly feminine, and after his trip wrote the book The Common School Journal. The Common School Journal consisted of six main points, including The public shouldn't be ignorant. Education should be paid for by an interested public. It will embrace children from a variety of backgrounds, will be non secretan will be taught using the tenets of a free society, and will be provided by well-trained teachers. Mann pushed for schools to be funded by a state tax, which he got, and is still the case today, as every child in the U.S. has the opportunity to go to school for free. In order to set his points carried out in schools, and to ensure that schooling was fair and good for everybody, Mann personally visited every school in Massachusetts, which was not an easy task, as transportation was much slower and was available in the 1840s. Mann was against corporal punishment in school. Punishment didn't involve physical things. Instead of physical punishment, Mann taught discipline through the bell system, being on time and having good attendance. Mann was also an activist to separate school from a religion, saying that religious belief shouldn't get in the way of education. After Mann retired from the Massachusetts Board of Education, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, where he served from 1848 to 1853, and played a vivid role in passing legislation to advance education even further in the U.S. His time here ended after he was offered to become the president of Antioch College in Ohio. He took the position and taught econ and philosophy, and was there until his death in 1859. But why does Horace Mann deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Mann's schooling reform led to an increase in school attendance rate, a more informed public, and shaped the school system we, we see today. Before Mann started his reform of schools, many poor and rural students didn't go to school. But after Mann served as chairman of the Massachusetts Board of Education, many more of these kids went to school. Another impact Mann has that still lasts today was feminizing the teaching force. After his trip to Prussia, Mann said that many of the teachers there were women. This applied to the U.S. school system as well. Today, in the U.S., 76% of all teachers are women, and you can thank Mann for this. In a time where work was scarce for women, Mann singled out a profession for them that they still dominate today. This also shows how Mann shaped the modern school system we see today. The bell system to help kids be on time has lived for almost 180 years now, and is still as effective now as it was then. It teaches kids to be on time for class, something many people struggle with. The teaching force is majority feminine thanks to man as well, and is the same as it was 180 years ago. School has been tax funded for over 150 years, a large part of that thanks to man as he pushed strongly for the bill that to pass. School is still tax funded today, albeit where the money comes from is different. It's still funded by an informed public, which is one of man's points in the Common School Journal. As of 2016, only 19 states allowed corporal punishment, and it's seldom used in schools. Who is against this? Man, of course. Before schools were racially integrated in the latter half of the 20th century, man pushed this in schools and well, encouraging students to embrace children from different backgrounds and ethnicities. Because of how many more children were educated as a result of man, the public became more educated as well. There is a direct link between education and voting rights, and because the public was more educated, more people voted as a result of man. As you can see on this graph, voting rates spiked when man was reforming education, which shouldn't be a surprise whatsoever. In conclusion, Horace Mann should be in the A Push Hall of Fame because of the impact he had on educating the American public and performing the school system we still see today, 160 years after his death. To show how vast an impact he had on American schooling, Mann has 57 schools across the country named after him, and two in Minnesota, a place he has never traveled or served in government for. However, his impact can still be seen today, as you are sitting here right now, whether or not you want to be, is because of Horace Mann.